Welcome to Hibiscus Petroleum's Financial Results Webcast. This webcast presents an overview of the results reported as part of our quarterly financial report for the three-month period ended 31st December 2019 and released earlier today. This webcast has been prepared by Hibiscus Petroleum Berhad or the company solely for general information purposes only and shall at all times be heard and or viewed together with the full quarterly report for the same period that has been made available or published by the company on its website. This webcast may contain forward-looking statements which are based on current expectations, beliefs and projections about future events or matters. By listening to and or viewing the webcast, you agree to the limitations and notifications set out in the disclaimer section of this webcast. Our presentation today is comprised of six components. In part one, Uday Jera, our Senior Vice President, Corporate Development, will briefly introduce the company. In part two, Goloka Ravi, Corporate Coordinator for the Anasura Asset, will provide an overview of and an update on developments at our UK producing asset, the Anasuria Cluster. Mark Payton, the CEO of Anasuria Hibiscus UK, will then provide an overview of the status of the development project relating to the marigold and sunflower discovered oil fields located offshore in the UK continental shelf in part three. In part four, Dr. Pascal Hoss, the CEO of Sea Hibiscus Syndrome Berhad, will provide an overview of our North Sabah Malaysian producing asset. In part five, Yip Chi Yong, or CY, our Chief Financial Officer, will present the highlights of the group's second financial quarter results for the financial year ending 30th June 2020. Kevin Robinson, our Vice President of Special Projects, will then conclude our presentation with some of our key messages for this quarter in part six. Should you have any queries, you may contact our Investor Relations team via the email address provided at the end of this presentation. I shall now hand over to Uday. Hello, this is Uday Jairam. I'm the Senior Vice President, Corporate Development at Hibiscus Petroleum Berhad. Let me commence this presentation by providing you with a brief introduction to our company. Hibiscus Petroleum was listed on the main market of Bursa Malaysia in July 2011 with the vision of being a respected and valuable pure play, independent oil and gas exploration and production company. Our 2021 mission is to secure 100 million barrels of net proven and probable or 2P oil reserves and or entitlement and achieve a net production of about 20,000 barrels of oil per day from currently held assets or potential new ventures located in areas of our geographic focus. We have approximately 1.6 billion shares in issue. These shares are held by more than 16,000 shareholders, with our core management team owning the largest single block of shares in the company with a 10.6% holding. Other corporate and institutional shareholders approximately hold a combined 57% interest in the company, while retail shareholders provide liquidity with circa 32% ownership. On the 21st of February 2020, our market capitalization stood at circa 1.4 billion ringgit. Hibiscus Petroleum is a component of the MSCI Global Small Cap Index, as well as the FTSE Bursa Malaysia Mid-70 Index. In addition, our listed securities are also Sharia compliant. Issued in March 2018 and set to expire in March 2021, we also have approximately 317 million warrants outstanding. The exercise price of these warrants is currently at 1 ringgit 6 sen. The exercise price will step up by 6 sen to 1 ringgit and 12 sen on the 20th of March 2020. Today, our key activities are focused on efficiently monetizing our producing oil fields and growing our portfolio of development and production assets in areas of our geographical focus. These areas are the United Kingdom, Malaysia and Australia. The company currently has two production assets, the first being the Anasuria cluster of oil and gas fields located in the UK North Sea, which we acquired about four years ago. Since our acquisition of this asset, the Anasuria cluster has contributed significant positive cash flow and profits to our company. Over the second quarter of the 2020 financial year, the Anasuria cluster delivered an average of approximately 3,000 barrels of oil equivalent per day, net to our company. In addition to the Anasuria cluster, we became the operator of the 2011 Not Saba Enhanced Oil Recovery Production Sharing Contract, or PSC, on 31st March 2018. We have a 50% participating interest in this PSC, with the remaining 50% non-operated participating interest being held by Petronas Charigali, a wholly owned subsidiary of Petroleum National Berhad, or Petronas, the national oil company of Malaysia. 
For our 50% participating interest in the North Sabah PSC, our estimated entitlement of daily production over the second financial quarter was approximately 6,300 barrels of oil per day. In summary, the total oil and gas production rate across both assets averaged approximately 9,300 barrels of oil equivalent per day over the second financial quarter, of which oil production accounted for 9,000 barrels per day. Within our current portfolio of assets, our total net proven and probable reserves as of 1st January 2019 stood at 50.7 million barrels of oil, while net contingent oil resources stood at 71 million barrels. Financially, our balance sheet continues to strengthen. As of 31st December 2019, our net assets stood at 1.3 billion ringgit, and our unrestricted cash balance stood at 90.7 million ringgit. As of 31st December 2019, we were operating without debt. Our current portfolio, consisting of two exploration, two development, and two producing assets, is spread across three continents. In Asia, we are present in Malaysia where we operate a production sharing contract or PSC covering four producing fields. The North Sabah PSC, as it is called, contains a net 2P oil reserves of 20.5 million barrels of oil as of 1st January 2019. In addition, our net 2C oil resources in the North Sabah fields amount to circa 31.7 million barrels of oil. In Europe, we are present in the United Kingdom and have interests in several fields under concession agreement type arrangements. Firstly, we jointly operate several producing fields in the Anasuria cluster. In addition, we have a non-operating interest in the Cook field, which is a tie-back to the Anasuria Floating Production Storage and Offloading, or FPSO, facility. Based on an independent assessment, the total net 2P oil reserves in the Anasuria cluster are 23.7 million barrels of oil as of 1st January 2019 and 22.8 million barrels of oil as of 1st January 2020. Another 7.8 million barrels of 2C resources net to the company are located within the fields of the Anasuria cluster. Secondly, we are also the operator of blocks 15 stroke 13A and 15 stroke 13B, a development asset in the Quad 15 area of the United Kingdom continental shelf. These blocks include the Marigold and Sunflower discovered oil fields. We believe that material contingent resources are located in the Marigold and Sunflower oil fields in which we have a 50% interest. These two discovered oil fields are estimated to contain approximately 30 million barrels of 2C oil resources net to the company. We also completed the acquisition of blocks 15 stroke 18D and 15 stroke 19B, potentially also a development project in the Quad 15 area. These blocks include the Crown discovered oil field. Subject to independent third-party expert assessment, we believe that between 4 and 8 million barrels of 2C oil resources are contained within the Crown discovered oil field. In the months and years going forward, we intend to gradually convert these contingent resources into proved and probable reserves or entitlement barrels, thereby further enhancing the value of our asset base. In Australia, under a concession type agreement, we have approximately 6.5 million barrels of 2P oil reserves located in the Vic L31 West Seahorse development asset, which we operate. Finally, in terms of exploration assets, we also operate the Vic P57 license, which we believe contains exciting opportunities. In the Vic P57 license, two key prospects have been identified. The first is Felix with best estimate prospective resources of net 23 million barrels of oil, and the second being Pointer, with best estimate prospective resources of net 128 billion cubic feet of gas. We currently have a 75.1% direct interest in Vic P57 and are now in the process of farming out the license. We also recently exercised an option to acquire a non-operated 50% interest in the VIC P74 exploration license, located in the same area as VIC P57. These assets hold significant potential for our future development plans. The chart on your screen depicts the group's targeted average daily oil production target by 2021. Our target for the 2020 financial year is to deliver between 3.3 and 3.5 million barrels of oil across both the Anasuria and North Sabah assets. In order to achieve our 2021 mission of producing 20,000 barrels of oil per day, our main focus will entail enhancing production at Anasuria 
and the North Sabah fields and positioning for further acquisitions of producing assets in our areas of geographic focus. I'll now hand you over to Pascal to provide a business overview of our Malaysian North Sabah operations. Hello, I am Pascal Hoss. I'm the CEO of Sea Hibiscus Sandir in Brahat. The Hibiscus is the holder of a 50% participating interest in the 2011 North Saba Enhanced Oil Recovery Production Sharing Contract, or PSC. We are also operator of this PSC. The remaining 50% participating interest is held by Petronas Charigali Sandir in Brahat. This is our first PSC in Malaysia, and our participating interest was acquired through a transaction with the Shell Group that was successfully completed on the 31st of March 2018. The North Saba PSC has delivered production since 1979 and our production rights under the PSC continue until 2040. Through the PSC and the joint operating agreement signed with our partner Petronas Charigali, we have a 50% participating interest and operatorship of four producing oil fields offshore Saba, namely St. Joseph, South Furious, SF30, and Barton. We also have the operatorship of the Laborn Kudal Terminal and all the other equipment and assets related to the PSC. As reported by our independent technical valuer, Risk Advisory, and based on our participating interest, the net 2P oil reserves of the fields under this PSC is 20.5 million barrels as of 1st January 2019 through to the end of the PSC life in 2040. Risk Advisory had also estimated that the 2C contingent oil resources in the fields covered by this PSC based on our net entitlement is 31.7 million barrels. Thus, we believe this asset holds a great deal of future potential. Subject to oil price and regulatory approvals, we hope to be able to allocate capital and our technical capabilities towards unlocking the available 2C contingent resources. The table on this slide shows the operational performance of the North Saba asset over the past four quarters. That is from the 1st of January 2019 until the 31st of December 2019. During the current quarter, North Saba production facilities recorded an average uptime of 93% an increase from the previous quarter due to the resumption of normal operations following planned shutdowns for maintenance and infill drilling activities. The higher uptime and new oil production from the completion of the St. Joseph infill drilling and SF30 infill drilling projects contributed to an increase in average gross oil production of approximately 20% during the current quarter. Average OPEX per barrel for North Saba for the current quarter decreased to 12.23 US dollars per barrel due to higher production volumes and lower production OPEX. Furthermore, during the current quarter, we conducted two crude oil offtakes with a total of approximately 671,000 barrels of oil being sold at an average realized price of 70.19 US dollars per barrel. Overall, we are pleased with our operating performance for this quarter. In September 2019, we received a Focused Recognition Award from Petronas for demonstrating prudent deferment management of the North Saba PSC in addition to operating to the highest standards of asset integrity. Additionally, we received three Focus Recognition Awards from Petronas' Completion Standardization Technical Committee in January 2020 in relation to our 2019 drilling campaign. One of these awards was for our overall uptime performance of 99.7% during the seven-well drilling program at the St. Joseph and SF30 oil fields. The achievement of a high uptime resulted in an estimated cost avoidance of 2 million US dollars. We continue to work towards aggressive production targets and pursue cost reduction opportunities without compromising the high health and safety standards that are expected in our industry. Referring to the projects shown on this slide, in August 2018, Petronas approved the St. Joseph infill drilling project through the Milestone Review 4 project maturation process. As part of the same process, Petronas subsequently approved the field development plan in December 2018. This project entailed the drilling of three infill producer wells utilizing a triple splitter wellhead from the St. Joseph Jacket A platform with minimal topside facilities modification. Drilling operations commenced when the rig mobilized to location on 22 May 2019 and the project completed in August 2019. The three infill wells reported a combined stabilized flow rate of over 3,200 barrels per day gross, exceeding our pre-drill expectations of 2,600 barrels per day. In addition, this project added 2.77 million stock tank barrels of gross 2P reserves to the asset. The total gross capital committed to this project was approximately 143 million ringgit, shared equally with our joint venture partner, Petronas Charigali. Like the St. Joseph infill drilling project, 
The SF-30 infill drilling project entailed the drilling of three infill producer wells at the South Furious Jacket Sea through the last remaining conductor slot and required minimal topside facilities modifications. We obtained Petronas approval in July 2019 for the SF-30 infill drilling project development plan. This project had the objective of increasing production and reserves of the South Furious 30 fields. Total capex amounted to approximately 129 million ringgit, which was also shared equally with Petronas Tarigali. Drilling commenced in August 2019, and we successfully completed and brought online two of the three plant infill wells. The first well, SF32, was brought online and produced its first oil on 8 October 2019. The well was tested at approximately 1,100 barrels per day with the production choke at 3864 setting with no indications of water or sand production at surface. The second well brought online, SF34, produced its first oil on 26 October 2019 with an initial well test of approximately 500 barrels per day. SF36, the third well, was drilled in October and found to be wet. Subsequently, a sidetrack well, SF36 sidetrack 1, was drilled in November following the drilling of the SF30 water flood phase 1N infill water injector. The sidetrack well remained suspended pending the completion of the SF30 water flood phase 1 project. The SF30 water flood phase 1 project development plan was approved by Petronas in October 2019, and on 20th February 2020, water injection commenced. This project entailed the drilling and completion of one infill water injection well through a new conductor, with the goal of scoping out the effectiveness of water injection as a means of repressurizing and providing long-term reservoir pressure support for the SF30 field. Phase one of this project is intended to assess the viability for a full field water injection development. Total capital expenditure for this project is budgeted to be approximately 55 million ringgit and is being shared equally with our joint venture partner. As of 31st December 2019, 44 million ringgit had been spent, with the remaining 11 million ringgit to be spent in the financial quarter ending 31st March 2020. We are currently working towards maturing our 2020 drilling program, comprising infill wells at the St. Joseph Field, targeting the major and minor sands. Further information will be disclosed in the next financial quarter. The seven well drilling campaign of 2019 and our plans for 2020 are consistent with our objective of enhancing production from the North Sabah asset and demonstrates that Malaysia is an integral part of our long-term growth strategy. Golika will now take you through the details of the Anasaria cluster, which is located offshore the United Kingdom in part three of this webcast. Hello, I'm Goloka Ravi. I'm the corporate coordinator for the Anasaria asset. I'll now take you through some information on the Anasaria cluster. Our indirect wholly owned subsidiary, Anasura Hibiscus UK Limited, or AHUK, has been involved in the joint operations of the Anasura asset for almost four years. This asset is located about 175 kilometers east of Aberdeen, in 94 meters of water, and has been in production since 1996. Based on an independent reserves assessment conducted in 2018, and the assumptions contained therein, the estimated remaining economic life of the asset is up to 2038. Our interest in the Anasura cluster comprises a 50% direct interest in the Teal, Teal South, Guillemot A and Kite fields. We jointly operate these fields together with our partner Ping Petroleum through a jointly owned legal entity incorporated in the United Kingdom called the Anasura Operating Company Limited. We generally refer to the Anasura Operating Company Limited as AOC. The cluster also includes the Cook field, and in this field, we have a non-operated 19.3% interest. We also own a 50% direct interest in the Anasura FPSO. Included as part of the Anasura cluster are all components of the installed subsea production infrastructure and the Anasura FPSO. Taking a closer look at the field layout, the subsea infrastructure underpinning the production of hydrocarbons is quite extensive and spans 25 kilometers from north to south. We utilize the services of Petrofac, a reputable international oil field service provider in the role of duty holder for the offshore facilities, pipelines and wells. Our joint ownership of the Anasura FPSO and management of operating costs through a risk reward type arrangement with Petrofac 
are key drivers in keeping our unit production costs at competitive levels for this type of facility. In Anasuria, the average uptime achieved for the current quarter was 85%, while the average daily oil production rate was 2,968 barrels of oil equivalent per day, both metrics being an improvement when compared to those achieved in the previous quarter. One crude oil offtake was conducted at Anasuria, in which approximately 250,000 barrels of oil net to AHUK was sold at an average realized oil price of 68.67 US dollars per barrel. The average OPEX per barrel of oil equivalent in Anasuria for the current quarter was 22.64 US dollars. Operational performance in the current quarter improved due to the resumption of normal operations after the planned 2019 offshore turnaround completed in July 2019. In October 2019, a diving campaign to conduct well inspections and maintenance, as well as to install a gas lift jumper to the recently drilled Guillemot P1 sidetrack well, was successfully executed. Whilst production was partially impacted, the gas lift jumper will allow production from the Guillemot P1 sidetrack well to be enhanced once we commence gas lifting the well. Whilst planned maintenance initiatives affect operational performance, these activities are critical enablers of a safe working environment and overall can lead to an improved performance of the offshore facilities. Barring unforeseen circumstances, these measures, together with the production enhancement projects that are being executed this year, are expected to improve the operational performance of the Anasuria asset in the 2020 financial year. The projects identified on this slide have the common objective of taking us towards the target of delivering up to 5,000 barrels per day net to hibiscus petroleum by 2021. Referring to the projects itemized in the table on this slide, the Cook Water Injector Project, which was sanctioned in May 2018, consisted of two phases. The first phase entailed the drilling of a well through which water will be injected over the coming years to repressurize the Cook field. The second phase covered the installation of a pipeline connecting the new well to the water injection pumps located on the Anasuria FPSO. Both the first and second phases of the project have been successfully completed. In drilling the water injection well, reservoir pressure at the injection well location was found to be as predicted. Additionally, the oil water contact was determined to be deeper than originally anticipated. The implication of a deeper oil water contact is positive and is anticipated to increase our net 2P reserves in the Cook field. We will make a further disclosure when the detailed work to establish the latest reserves estimates have been completed. The installation of a subsea pipeline to link the water injection well to the Anasuria FPSO was carried out in the current quarter. An injection of water into the Cook field reservoir commenced on 3rd October 2019. In December 2019, the injection of water ceased due to a failure in a subsea component. While the water injection activity has ceased, production from the Cook field is progressing as expected at the current time. Ithaca Energy, as operator of the Cook field, is currently undertaking an investigation into the root cause of the failure and will provide an update to the Cook joint venture on the way forward in due course. Our total net capital expenditure for this project is estimated at 52 million ringgit. Similar to the Guillemot P2 sidetrack conducted in 2018, the Guillemot P1 sidetrack was an opportunity to drain additional volumes of oil by drilling a sidetrack well from the existing Guillemot P1 oil producing well. Drilling operations commenced in May 2019 and subsequently completed in August 2019. Whilst the well has commenced production, the final scope of this project to install a gas lift jumper to enhance production was conducted as part of a diving campaign executed in October 2019. The well is being monitored for sand and H2S production and more recently gas lifting of this well has commenced. Net capital expenditure for this project was approximately 97 million ringgit, with the objective to unlock approximately 17 million barrels of oil from our current net 2P reserves. I will now hand over to Mark, who will give you an overview of the marigold and sunflower assets. Hello, I'm Mark Payton. I am the CEO of Anasuri Biscus UK Limited. I will now briefly take you through the key points of our interests in blocks 1513A and 1513B. These are development assets which are located in the United Kingdom. As you may recall, on the 17th of October 2018, 
we announced that our indirect wholly owned subsidiary, AHUK, had completed the transaction to acquire a 50% interest in blocks 1513A and 1513B for a total purchase consideration of 37.5 million US dollars. The blocks are located offshore in the UK sector of the North Sea, approximately 250 kilometers northeast of Aberdeen in water depth of 140 meters. Block 1513A consists of a significant oil-bearing discovered field called Marigold, whilst Block 1513B, which lies northeast of Block 1513A, consists of a smaller discovered field called Sunflower. Based on an independent report by AGR Tracks International Limited, the gross 2C contingent oil resources in the blocks are estimated to be 60 million barrels of oil. As we have 50% interest in the blocks, this translates to 30 million barrels of net 2C contingent oil resources being attributable to Hibiscus Petroleum. This acquisition presented an opportunity for us to expand our footprint in an area of our geographic interest and is consistent with our 2021 mission of accreting value to all our stakeholders through the addition of production and proven reserves. As the operator of these blocks, we have established a dedicated project team in Kuala Lumpur, coupled with a modest presence in Aberdeen, Scotland. The project team has been tasked with conducting the subsurface field development and engineering studies, and with the support of third-party contractors, successfully executing the concept select phase. A subsea tieback to an FPSO was determined as the preferred concept, and the final concept select report was submitted to the UK's Oil and Gas Authority, or OGA, for their review and consent in the previous quarter. We subsequently received a letter from the OGA in October 2019 stating that they had no objections with our preferred concept. We have now commenced with front-end engineering and design phase to continue the progress towards establishing a field development plan, environmental impact assessment and the production facilities required for the development. The project will be executed with two drilling phases to optimise capital deployment. The first phase of the development will involve the drilling and production of three subsea wells in the Marigold field alone. In the second phase of the project, we anticipate that about four additional wells will be drilled in Marigold and tied back to the FPSO production facility. We have also identified stranded discoveries around the Marigold and Sunflower fields which we plan to tie back to the FPSO in subsequent drilling phases. We believe that potential collaboration with concession owners of some of these stranded discoveries located around our blocks is feasible and will allow a reduction in overall unit development and production costs for all parties. This slide represents the potential value accretion of the Marigold and Sunflower fields as we achieve key milestones towards our first oil objective from these assets. We purchased interests in the blocks in which these fields are located and based on reports from third-party competent experts, they contain approximately 30 million barrels of 2C contingent resources net to the group. We paid 37.5 million US dollars for these interests. This results in an approximate acquisition cost of $1.25 per barrel. As previously mentioned, we have already finalised the development concept for the Marigold and Sunflower fields and the regulatory authorities in the United Kingdom informed us in October 2019 that they have no objection to our proposed development solution. A schematic of the development concept is shown here. Given that the development concept has been finalised, our next key milestone will be the achievement of the final investment decision or FID for this project. This will be followed by the securing of the approval of the OGA for the Field Development Plan or FDP. We target to achieve this milestone by the end of 2020 calendar year. Once the final investment decision has been made to develop these fields, we may farm out some of our interest in the Marigold and Sunflower assets. Our objective of reducing our interests is to ensure that we are able to fund the development of these assets without overextending ourselves from a gearing perspective. The next key milestone will be to achieve first oil by the end of calendar year 2022. In summary, we are excited by the potential value to be derived from the Marigold and Sunflower fields. We see this asset as a game changer for the group, 
boosting our net oil production rate and establishing the group as a mid-size E&P player. On the 12th of December 2019, we announced that AH UK had completed the sale and purchase agreement to acquire 100% interest in licence P2366 from United Oil and Gas PLC and Swift Exploration Limited. The total cash consideration of up to 5 million US dollars is to be paid based on a combination of a series of milestones and an overriding royalty scheme. Licence P2366 containing blocks 1518D and 1519B is located offshore in the UK sector of the North Sea, approximately 250 kilometres northeast of Aberdeen and 12 kilometres southeast of the Marigold Field. It includes the Crown Discovered Field, which, subject to an independent third party experts assessment, contains proven and probable or 2C resources of between 4 and 8 million barrels of recoverable oil. This transaction was an opportunity for us to aggregate 2C resources from the Crown Discovery at a competitive unit cost per barrel and integrate these contingent resources as part of the Marigold area-wide development with the objective of reducing overall unit development and production costs. I will now pass you on to CY who will take you through the financials of the group for the current quarter. Hi, I'm CY, the group's Chief Financial Officer. I'll take you through the financial highlights for the current quarter. Sea Hibiscus became the operator of the North Sabah PSC on 31st March 2018. Accordingly, the current quarter represents the seventh quarter that North Sabah business performance data under the operatorship of Sea Hibiscus is being reported for detailed analysis. Earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation and amortization, or EBITDA, for the North Sabah asset is reported at approximately 110 million ringgit for the current quarter from the sale of 671,000 barrels of crude oil in two off takes. Average realized oil price achieved was 70.19 US dollars per barrel compared to 63.63 US dollars per barrel in the previous quarter. Consequently, the EBITDA margin for the current quarter rose to 56% compared to 52% in the previous quarter. Additionally, average uptime in North Sabah in the current quarter of 93% was higher in the current quarter when compared to 85% in the previous quarter, while average gross oil production increased by approximately 20% compared to the previous quarter. These factors resulted in average OPEX per barrel reducing from 15.33 US dollars in the previous quarter the 12.23 US dollars in the current quarter. The tax regime under which Malaysian oil and gas activities are governed and is thus applicable to sea hibiscus is the Petroleum Income Tax Act 1967 or PETA. The provisions of PETA are applied to net taxable petroleum income at the rate of 38%. Net tax charge for the North Sabah segment in the current quarter amounted to approximately 35 million ringgit resulting in a profit after tax of 44.8 million ringgit. Apart from the taxes levied on profits generated from operations, there was recognition of tax liabilities adjusting certain tax-related estimates originally advised by the previous operator of the North Sabah asset upon completion of the acquisition of the asset on 31st March 2018 in the current quarter. Adjustments to such estimates were confirmed by the sellers to see hibiscus during the previous quarter, upon them finalising their annual statutory tax submissions. Note that such adjustments will not recur after the current quarter. Turning to the Anasuria hibiscus segment in the United Kingdom, EBITDA and EBITDA margin achieved for the current quarter was approximately 35 million ringgit and 47% respectively. Revenue recorded in the current quarter amounted to 75 million ringgit compared to 69.3 million ringgit in the previous quarter. The increase was due to higher average realized oil price achieved. Anasuria Hibiscus sold 250,000 barrels of crude oil and an average realized oil price of 68.67 US dollars per barrel in the current quarter. In the previous quarter, 272,000 barrels of crude oil were sold and an average realized oil price of 58.41 US dollars per barrel. In addition, Average uptime and average OPEX per barrel of oil equivalent in the current quarter of 85% and 22.64 US dollars respectively performed more favorably when compared to the previous quarter, where the respective metrics attained were 77% and 
and 26.04 US dollars respectively. For the current quarter, profit after tax delivered by the Anosura Hibiscus segment amounted to approximately 10 million ringgit. In the United Kingdom, the total tax rate for Anosura Hibiscus is 40%, which consists of a ring fence corporation tax and a supplementary charge at 30% and 10% respectively. A net tax expense of 5.1 million ringgit was recognised in the current quarter, which is a minor increase when compared to 4.5 million ringgit recognised in the previous quarter. Whilst profits are extremely important, management's focus remains on delivering strong and sustainable EBITDA levels, as long-term business continuity is of the highest priority. Our business performance is underpinned by several factors, predominantly the price of the brand crude oil benchmark at approximately the time of a scheduled offtake from our crude oil storage facilities. Given that oil price is affected by global macroeconomic factors, which are not within the control of the company, focus is placed on the operational performance of the assets, such as production rates and facilities availability, as well as the management of operational expenses. A key metric that we utilise to track our operational performance is average unit production costs. The average unit production costs for both the Anasura cluster and the North Sabah PSC are well below the average realised oil price achieved in the respective quarters. As shown in slide 23, we have seen oil prices much lower and higher than current crude oil price levels, and we have managed on all occasions to remain profitable. The careful management of costs to maintain low operational expenditure and the delivery of production enhancement projects are key towards obtaining a low unit production cost structure. This is a significant contributor towards our profitability. We wish to reiterate that management's focus remains on delivering strong and sustainable EBITDA levels as long-term business continuity is of the highest priority. Over the past few quarters, our balance sheet has been gradually strengthening more so with the introduction of the North Sabah asset as part of the group's overall business portfolio since 31st March 2018. We have built our total assets to approximately 2.6 billion ringgit and shareholders' funds stand at about 1.3 billion ringgit. Included in shareholders' funds are retained earnings of 474.8 million ringgit. Year on year, total assets have increased by 17%, while shareholders' funds have risen by 11%. Net assets per share currently stands at 81 cents. In addition, as at 31st December 2019, the group's unrestricted cash balance stood at a reasonably healthy 87.2 million ringgit. The restricted cash recorded in our results relates mainly to a security for our portion of the estimated cost of decommissioning the facilities of the Anasuria cluster. In this regard, we are required to periodically place monies into a trust and this commenced 18 months after the completion date of the Anasuria cluster acquisition. This activity will continue until such time that the security has been fully provided. To note, the group remains debt-free as of 31st December 2019, as all our activities and acquisitions up to that date have been funded with equity and internally generated funds. Over the course of the next 12 months, we anticipate that we shall undertake certain capital-raising initiatives to ensure that the projects and opportunities we have in hand, which are expected to enhance production and create value, are executed smoothly. The group is currently in a position to gear up to a conservative level as the need arises, based on our recurring EBITDA. Looking ahead to the projects we have planned for 2020, we envisage that some borrowings will be required. We are currently considering various debt options that are on offer, bearing in mind factors such as long-term capital requirements, preference for the group to maintain a certain level of agility and financial flexibility, and overall weighted average cost of capital. As our plans mature, we shall make the relevant disclosures. Before we wrap up, I would like to hand over to Kevin to highlight a few takeaway points. Hello, I'm Kevin Robinson, VP Special Projects. I would like to close this presentation with some key messages. Hibiscus Petroleum is positioning for further acquisition of producing assets with a focus on adding to our existing portfolio in the areas where we already do business. In the first two quarters of financial year 2020, we have delivered approximately 1.5 million barrels of oil. Barring unforeseen circumstances, we are on track to achieve our financial year 2020 target of delivering between 3.3 million and 3.5 million barrels of oil safely and efficiently.
We are maintaining our 2021 target of 20,000 barrels of oil per day, comprising of 7,000 barrels per day from the North Sabah asset, 5,000 barrels per day from the Anasuria cluster, and a minimum of 8,000 barrels per day from new producing assets. The final investment decision and regulatory approvals for the Marigold project are currently on track to be in place by the end of the calendar year 2020. We continue to build our technical capability and track record as a capable operator, having received awards and recognitions for operational, safety and business performances in Malaysia and the United Kingdom. Furthermore, we aim to deliver consistent and strong EBITDA margins through the management of our unit production costs. We wish to highlight that as of December 31st, 2019, the group had no debt and is in a position to gear up to a conservative level as a need arises. We are excited by the activities and opportunities that lie ahead for Ibiscus Petroleum and hope that upcoming developments will act as positive value enhancing triggers for our shareholders. And that's all we have for this quarterly earnings webcast. Thank you for tuning in.